I was the first to arrive, and as you can see, my choice was superb. This is a Citroen DS3 Racing, and it does everything a hot hatchback should. It is bonkers to look at, and with 204 horsepower under the bonnet, it's bonkers to drive as well. But it still has back seats that fold down. It's still small. It's still relatively inexpensive. It's, ah, ah, it seems Mr May has arrived in a, uh, in a driving instructor's car. This is a Renault Clio, but it's the cup version. And it is, pound for pound, the most exciting car on sale. Not my words, not my words, the words of Autocar magazine. Autocar? Yes. The magazine that sacked you? Yes. And I could point out that it's £16,000 and yours is, what, 23 Where's your aircon? Cruise control, sat nav, you haven't got anything. This it's, got, has... it's got aircon. It's an optional extra. It's an option that's been selected. You've only got, to. what, you've got 197 horsepower? Yeah. 204. That's very nearly as much power as yours. In the same way that the Egyptian army is very nearly as powerful as the American army. You've 197. Mercifully, yes. at this point, Hammond arrived. In a car from the 1950s. <laughs> Gentlemen, behold, the Fiat 500 R Bath convertible. The best hot hat ever. Well, apart from a couple of things. One is it's not very hot, and two, it's not a hatchback. It, I'm with him. It is hot. This has got the SS kit on it, so it's 158 brake horsepower in there. Wow. Just a couple of things. Small. <clears throat> yes. Yes, it is. What have you... This is enormous. This is the, the, the Clio. Yes. Cup. Yes. You brought one of those ridiculously gaudy training shoes with springs at the back. Look at me, robot shoe. Have you seen this. the writing? Look? <laughs> look at it. This would look good on the deck of a Nimitz class aircraft carrier. We're not on the deck of a Nimitz class. We're in a it beautiful also... Italian plaza. You know what this is? What? Yes. Juvenile. Juvenile. I have to say, James, James one well, thing. Juvenile. That you... <clears throat> this I mean, is just yes. a small French car. It also has an optional extra on it. It has air conditioning, yes. Yes, it has something else. Ah, yes. Oh. No, I didn't do. I... What this actually means in Italian is bell end. Yes. James, just, I mean, just, it's just a headline to sum up the cars. Magnificent, ridiculous. It's a bit boring. <laughs> Bland. It might look <laughs> boring to you, but isn't it, it, isn't, it isn't it is. boring because it's about. I mean, what are these cars about? They are about the sensation of driving, and I know this will give it to me because it's a small Renault and they are the best in the world at it. It's about fun and experience. Hello, it looks magnificent, it's genuinely it small. Looks. You can put the roof back, but it isn't a hatchback. Well, it's it's it like turning up to do the Grand National on a cow or a hen. It's not a it's just, Seeing that this was going nowhere, a producer stepped in with a challenge. No, Jim, this is a no-brainer. To see which of your cars works best in the urban environment, you will now leave the city of Lucca. Is that it? Yeah. Well, just drive out of a town? Well, how hard can that be? As it turned out, very hard. Because in this medieval walled city, the streets were a complete maze. Now, I think a left here. Oh, I can't go down. I can't go left. Right, but it doesn't matter too much. I'll just go along here and then turn right. Oh, no, there is, isn't a right. It's just somebody's drive. I have to go left. One way. Really, you don't say. Oh. <laughs> Every single turn you make puts you in exactly the same road as the one you've just left. Also, in any other city, the Renault and the Citroen would be considered quite small. Cock. But here, they were huge. And breathe in. Bloody hell. That's a squeeze. No, it's not going to fit. Sorry. Since when did the Renault Clio become an enormous car with a huge turning circle? Happily, the Fiat was small enough. But I had another problem. This just isn't working. And the visibility um, in the C version with the sliding roof, with the roof back, is, you know, it, it's good compared to, say, having a bag on your head or being blind. 
Eventually, I decided the best thing was to abandon ship. Right. I'm leaving the car here. I'm going to go ahead on foot. I know I can make it on foot. Find the way out, come back, pick up the car, drive out, win. This, it, this must be James's idea of hell. He gets lost in a hotel. Now, that was a curve in that road, which is essentially a right, but now I've gone to a left, so I must still be going the right way. Driving through somebody's restaurant. Sorry. 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 Hang on a minute. Is this... Is this the square where I started? Yes, it is. Hang on. That... That's the wall. That's the city wall. I've found it. There it is. Bit of a hill. Wasn't expecting that. Never mind. Uh. No, it's that way. Gearbox works. Reverse, first, both good. Meanwhile... I think that ramp may have been a bit of a mistake, because the view from here and the view over that way of trees suggests I am actually on top of the wall. Still, could be worse. Hi. Hello, what I can I? Yeah, have you seen a Fiat, a small black and white Fiat on your travels? Nothing to see here. Just a man driving on top of a historic monument. Eventually, I found my car and the way back to the city wall. That's the first time since I left that I've gone fast enough to activate the central locking. But outside the city gates, Professor Smug was already there. Yes, there's no missing it, is there? A man standing next to a child's training shoe. Did what? you see Lord Lucan? No. Oh, he's there. Shergar, they're yeah. all in there. 